Hello, I'm Katie and you're listening to Art Snaps, the weekly lockdown podcast celebrating Swindon's collection of modern British art. This is episode 12 and today I'm going to discuss three artworks with links to the theme of family. With lockdown restrictions being eased a little and giving us a chance to see our loved ones again, I thought it'd be a good time to talk about three very different pieces which I feel represent unique interpretations of this theme. When I first set out to create this episode, I was going to call it Family Portrait, but in fact none of these pieces are portraits in the strictest sense. Rather they use the idea of the family group to share different ideas, which relate more broadly to the artist's practices. So instead I decided to name the episode after one of the most poignant images in Swindon's collection, which is Charles Blackman's The Family from 1961, which is the first piece we're going to look at today. Charles Blackman was an Australian artist who started his career as a press artist for the Sun newspaper in Sydney, and then moved to Melbourne where he was in the second generation of expressionists. Now I wasn't able to find much information on this group specifically, but as an expressionist artist his focus would have been on representing an emotional experience or provoking an emotional response from the viewer. He was also a leading figure in the Antipodeans group, which placed importance on the human figure in art. And it formed in reaction to the dominance of abstract expressionism in the 50s, which placed emphasis on the formal qualities of painting rather than the subject matter. The Antipodeans advocated the use of the figure because of its potential to communicate human experience. So this emphasis on the human figure combined with his expressionist intentions resulted in emotionally charged images such as the family at Swindon Museum and Art Gallery. And I think it's even more poignant at the moment in our current situation as it seems to simultaneously represent the solidity of the family unit and total isolation. The four figures are linked by the compassionate gestures of simplified puppet-like hands and yet only the downcast face of the figure to the front right can actually be seen. They are pushed right up into our space, filling our vision with large blocks of black and grey. And though we can't quite enter their world, we can see it's filled with sadness. As I said before, it was painted in 1961, which was an interesting year for Blackman in terms of his exposure in Britain, as he contributed to an Australian painting exhibition at the Whitechapel Gallery in London. And that was the same year that this piece was acquired for Swindon Museum and Art Gallery through the Contemporary Art Society. And the following year, the Arts Council put on a huge touring exhibition of his work. So it's significant that the piece entered the collection around the time Blackman was becoming known and appreciated in England. And it's great to represent an artist whose work is bound up with another movement in another place and brings another dimension to art in 1960s Britain. As such, it's included in Swindon Museum and Art Gallery's current exhibition, Pop and Prosperity, which showcases work from the collection from the 1960s. The second piece I want to look at today is a charcoal drawing called Madonna and Child, which was made by Dennis Crefield in 1989, and is actually one of two versions of this piece in the collection. Though very modern in style, the subject matter responds to a long tradition of devotional depictions of the Madonna and Child, which can be found in images going as far back as the 5th century and are still being created today. This choice of religious imagery makes sense when you consider the body of work Crefield was creating during this time, and which he is in fact now best known for. On the screen now is another piece by Crefield and Swindon's collection depicting Westminster Abbey. This was created after a huge commission from the Arts Council to record all 26 medieval Gothic cathedrals in England, which Crefield carried out from 1985 to 87. And this kick-started his career as a creator of images of architectural heritage sites, which included important work for the National Trust and depictions of numerous French cathedrals, which chart the evolution of Gothic architecture. And he did this not through painstakingly detailed descriptions of the architecture, but with bold and energetic mark-making, So in Swindon's piece, he's captured Westminster Abbey's magnificent vaulted ceiling and pointed archways with wonderfully confident lines and great contrasts of light and dark. 
I'm aware that I've digressed from today's topic of family, but I sort of feel that getting a larger view of Crefield's work helps us understand why he might have chosen to depict the Madonna and child in this piece. There's a lot about his work which both celebrates elements of the past and infuses it with a modern sensibility. This particular piece is actually thought to be based on a Byzantine painting at the National Gallery called The Virgin and Child with St Dominic and St Aurea by the Italian artist Duccio in around 1312. I've included a link at the end of the podcast which I'd recommend taking a look at so you can see the similarities between the two pieces. Duccio's depiction of the Madonna and Child has the same sense of monumentality and importance as the Gothic cathedrals. But there's intimacy here too, in the way that Christ plays with the Virgin Mary's draperies, which seems to serve as a reminder that at the centre of Christianity, of the great story of salvation, there's a mother and her child. And Crefield does away with the grandeur of the Byzantine artwork, stripping away the exquisite gold leaf and rich colours, and leaving the core image of a mother tenderly holding her child. And in doing so, he's turned a devotional image into a very simple, universal image of motherly love. And as with the cathedrals, he uses bold, confident strokes of charcoal, And I love the way he's blocked out large parts of the drawing so we focus on the figures of the Madonna and child, even though their faces are simplified and obscured. In the other version of this piece in the collection, the focus shifts. Crefield has paid attention to the long, graceful hands of the Madonna and exaggerated the playful gesture of Christ. I suppose I chose to focus on the other version today because there's something more simple and tender about it which appeals to me. But this piece is created with more vigour and makes use of the smudging technique we also see in some of his cathedral drawings. It almost looks to me like Christ is misbehaving and the Madonna is losing her patience. So perhaps it shows a different, less idealistic side to motherhood. I'm going to end with a fairly recent addition to Swindon's collection called Mr and Mrs Aerobot and Babybot by David Bent, which is part of a series of photo collages he began in 2006. And I'm very intrigued by these human-robot hybrids, so I did a Q&A with David Bent for the Art on Tour blog a while back, which really shone some light on how these figures came about. Bent is a Swindon-based artist who had a solo exhibition at Swindon Museum and Art Gallery last year, which showcased work relating to important topics of our time, including inequality, civil rights and the human condition. But Ben is often particularly known as a painter of subjects related to aviation, and this is where the aerobots come from. His interest in aviation goes back to his childhood, as he was the son of an aviation enthusiast and a member of the Air Cadets at school. The Aerobot series was began in 2006, when Ben began to combine images he had taken of the noses of various aircraft with photo images from his past. And the result were these fantastic anthropomorphic figures, which Bent described as suggestive of the way we create robots in our own image. Certainly, I think they reflect the way we are increasingly humanising technology and making it more and more essential to our lives. We no longer just have smartphones, but entire smart houses and edited virtual versions of ourselves, which are often far detached from reality. Presented as a family unit, Bent's playful and curious aerobots seem to allude to the increasingly digital world that we are creating for the next generation. I'm going to bring this episode to an end now, but not before mentioning that David Bent's Mr and Mrs Aerobot and Babybot also features in Swindon Museum and Art Gallery's contribution to the Great British Art Quiz, which is compiled through Art UK and The Guardian. Have a look at The Guardian's website and test how much you know about Swindon's art collection. Plus, you can read more about David Bent's work by checking out our Q&A with him at www.swindonmuseumandartgallery.org.uk slash art on tour. Finally, I don't want to leave without mentioning that at the time of recording, it's Children's Art Week, so we're doing some extra work to promote the fantastic family creativity challenges which our education officer has been putting together during lockdown. These are also available through our blog and are well worth taking a look at if you have little ones to entertain at home. We hope you tune in for next week's episode of Art Snaps on the Bloomsbury Group in Swindon's collection. But for now, I'll say take care, stay safe and bye for now.